Hey, welcome. If you love art supplies, watercolors, gouache, painting outdoors, then this is hopefully the video for you. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. And in this video, I'm going to be answering the excellent questions that you have all asked. And as I do so, I will also be painting this rather different for me abstract piece. So with no further ado, I'm going to start off with the first questions. Um, the about me questions if you like and dh asks i'm a new follower so you may have covered this in the past but when and how did you get involved in art um what do you do professionally and how do you balance it with art making youtube and kofi Really great questions, Dee, and welcome to my YouTube. I guess I should start off by saying that I am a doctor by profession, so doctor most of the time, and when I'm not doctoring or seeing patients or operating, I am creating art, and when I'm not doing that, I am making YouTube videos or creating things for Kofi. Kofi is my art membership where I have a wonderful group of artists of all skill levels, and through it, I share more exclusive videos, art challenges, and kind of have a little bit more of a personal relationship with the artist and those who are interested in being part of it. So if that sounds like something that you are interested in, especially if you want to have a bit more of a sense of community when it comes to art or you just want to chat, then I highly recommend it. In terms of how I got started with art, I have always enjoyed drawing, even like as a young child, but I never um, actually like got to study it or anything beyond like uh, secondary school. And that's just because I was understandably focused on getting into medicine <laughs> and like actually passing all those exams and whatnot and taking, you know, the sciences and maths. Oddly enough, I did try to study art between the ages of 16 to 18, um, but long story short, my school wasn't a good school. Like it wasn't, I was in, they tried their best, they're doing their best, but it wasn't good. It was underfunded, state school, yada, 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 like, you know, so on and so forth. And thus they hadn't had many students go to study medicine certainly none for the past I think three years and they were very supportive about me studying medicine and they were very supportive and happy that I wanted to be a doctor I have to be clear that it's not that I was saying I wanted to be an artist I just knew that I enjoyed art and wanted to study it more and also felt I guess kind of the way that I feel with YouTube that if I had something more formal or more concrete then I would be integrating an element of self-care into my daily practice through creating art if there's nothing formal then I wouldn't create art and that's exactly what ended up happening I didn't create any art for many 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 years and they didn't want me to jeopardize my chances of actually getting into med school by taking on an extra subject and I don't have regrets about it because to be honest almost everyone who did art ended up failing it like I said it wasn't a very good school <laughs> but yes I did try and it didn't happen and um, no regrets and then with med school basically just focused on studying all the time so again I wasn't creating any art and then I became a junior doctor and again no time to create art so on and so forth until 2020 and um, for obvious reasons I was very much isolated <laughs> from everything apart from you know going to work and I really needed a positive outlet I was living on my own I, my only exposure to other people was obviously in the hospital and um, I really found comfort in art so I started drawing again and from there I started sharing it on Instagram and I found like a wonderful community of artists that were there and that were sharing their art and it kind of helped me see Instagram in a new light. I started the 100 day challenge and that was because I really wanted to focus on something other than, you know, <laughs> everything that was going on in the world. And this was a really good way for me to do that, like have a challenge. Um and then, yes, I was sharing that on Instagram and I wanted even more of a sense of community. And I started watching YouTube and then created my own YouTube videos. And from there, I think as I started creating more and more YouTube videos, one of the things that I really wanted that I, I hope and I think has kind of been communicated throughout is I really enjoyed the feeling of community, like wanting to actually talk to you and hear about you and hear about your experiences and things that are working and things that are not. And um, I think YouTube definitely gives me that way more than Instagram did, but I wanted to take things further and that's why I created my Kofi thereafter. 
by far my most asked question is like how do I balance it all and it kind of makes me feel bad because I I wish I had some magic formula and you know I almost feel like a fraud when it comes to saying it but I don't think I'm balancing it well (laughs) I'm just trying my best and also I don't have like other hobbies um and I just dedicated most if not all of my free time towards creating YouTube videos and creating art so you know watching less TV or if I'm watching TV then I'll also be painting at the same time and just really trying to make the most of the little pockets of time that I have. I do think that the balance isn't quite right because I pretty much work most of the time and then the little time that I'm not working I am creating YouTube videos and and Kofi videos and I am enjoying that but I would like to spend more time you know know out and about and um, with friends and with family so that's one of the things that I'm going to be focusing on in 2024 and when I find the solution I will share it (laughs) with you (laughs) but yeah I I procrastinate a lot like a lot a lot which is why it's interesting that I keep getting um, asked this question because I feel like I could definitely be more efficient with my time but that's pretty much um, the answers in a nutshell thank you so much for asking Dee. The next ever leader asked, if I could add to that, can you let us know what mistakes you did as a beginner and where you see yourself in the future? And again, another excellent question. I have actually made a video talking about all the mistakes that I made when I was starting and things that I wish I had known. And I will link that video for you because I think that if I had known those things, I would have saved myself a lot of time, money and frustration. I think to summarise that video, I can just say that I bought a lot of the wrong things when I was starting off and they were wrong for me because I didn't really know that much about watercolour or about my style or anything like that. And rather than buying a little and then getting more comfortable and then figuring out what to buy, I just bought quite a lot at the beginning. So that's why I would recommend that video so you don't make that same mistake. Another thing um, is that I think it's worth investing some time in learning the basics of watercolour. So I I don't think you need to get bogged down on the rules and carry them forever um, or create art in a certain and strict way unless that's what you want to do. But I do think that there's benefit in knowing the rules before you break them. So learning things like wet on wet tre- technique, wet on dry technique, um, wet on damp technique, learning glazing um learning how to do hard edges and soft edges and just having like a basic understanding of the vocabulary of the medium that you're trying to to learn before at the beginning as as well as even like color theory and everything and and then with time you will learn more but I do think that learning the basics can be quite an invaluable skill so those I think are the main things um don't buy things that you don't need (laughs) and uh invest in learning the basics then Susan Weller asks have you said your name anywhere or is it something that you've been keeping private and uh, again (laughs) very good very common question and yes it is something that I have been keeping private as I mentioned I I don't quite know why I feel this way but I really wanted and I really liked the fact that I have almost two separate areas I always wanted to keep medicine separate from my art especially you know given when and how I started it during 2020 so I liked that my art was kind of an escape uh, like I've continued it since and I almost feel like not everyone but you know um, it is the internet it's out there I don't want there to be any murky waters between my professional life as a doctor and my life as an artist on YouTube and I feel like everyone's been really understanding of that and I appreciate it so thank you Next, we have some questions about art supplies and there are quite a few questions. So I'll try and uh, speed up, we shall see. So Cobalt Opera, really cool name by the way, um, says, if you had to recommend an introductory watercolour set for a beginner slash early intermediate artist, what would be your go-to set? And again, I think I've mentioned some of it inside the mistakes that I made video as well as my favourites video but I think if I were to reiterate it I would say it's probably dependent on your budget and also where you are in the world as well as what you would like to create and the different watercolour properties that you have found up until this point that you enjoy and you want to have in your palette. Um, so for example I, I think irrespective of this I do recommend that you go for professional grade watercolours such as Roman Schmoor, Daniel Smith, Schminke, Core, 
or uh, Windsor and Newton like there's a, a wide range of them and if you're not sure and you're watching this then feel free to just ask me down below in the comments Holbein is another one that comes to mind I think that it is worth looking to see which ones are more affordable within your area and using that as a rough guide if money is no object <laughs> and no issue my personal favorites are Roman Schmuel and Daniel Smith and although Daniel Smith is a little bit more um, highly priced here because I'm in the UK I, I do still think that they are worth it I think both brands have a beautiful range of colors they have granulating watercolors they layer well they're excellent quality the only reason that I pick one over the other is that Roman Schmuel are my favorites but they come in pans and full pans they don't come in tubes whereas I like the freedom and the versatility that can come from getting your own tubes putting them into half pans I like that I then have the benefit of having tubes like all pans like both formats I like that I can pick how much to add to each half pans and create multiple palettes and mix the colors themselves and then recreate the half pans so I think that you just get more options with tubes and a lot of the time buying tubes can be more economical than buying half pans so that is why I I like having both of those brands again if you are unsure then feel free to leave me a comment down below if you are watching this you are a real mvp we're not ending the video but i i feel like one of the good questions would be to name what your favorite watercolor brand is in the comments so people who are tr struggling with this question can look at it and kind of use that as a guide as well i think that court is an excellent watercolor as well however it does tend to behave differently to other watercolors in that it moves quite a lot so if you don't want to have much control when you are painting then you will love them they have really beautiful colors as well but if you do want to have more control or if you're a beginner you may perhaps think that that is normal for all watercolors whereas whereas it's not it's very different I think that uh, Holbein watercolors are really beautiful and they layer very well they tend to not have many granulating colors so you may find that your effects are slightly different to somebody else's if you like granulation perhaps that's a brand not to get however if you don't like granulation and you are in Asia then again Holbein is an excellent choice Kurataki Ganzai Tambai paints are more opaque so they lay on a little bit thicker they're not the kind of paints that tend to lean towards being mixed so again they behave differently to what a beginner may expect of what is more western watercolors so that's probably why I wouldn't recommend them as a beginner set because I think that they are almost like a category of their own in terms of colors that I would recommend I know it sounds like a broken record but I really think that it's good to have the split primaries which basically means a warm and a cool of red blue and yellow and what warm and cool is referring to is whether it leans towards being reddish or whether it leans towards being bluish so I would have a yellow that can make me a nice bright green and I would have an orangey yellow I would have an orangey red as well as a pinky red and I would have a purpley blue as well as a greeny blue if that makes sense and in addition to those six colors I would add a burnt umber because you can get some really nice granulating effects with that as well as a Payne's gray or grayy color because again you can get some really nice depth with it and I would add your favorite colors on top of that because obviously we don't want all our paintings to look exactly the same as everyone else's and we don't want to be using exactly the same colors as everyone else and that comes through actually having colors that perhaps don't always make sense that perhaps won't always mix but are unique to you and fulfill your personality. I have made a number of different videos talking through the different palettes that I have had and the choices that I made behind them and I will link them for you and I will also leave a note in the description about what I consider to be warm and cool colours. If you are a Kofi member I have made a colour guide available for you where I basically list out all the colours and um, highlight whether they are warm or cool so that you can look at the different kind of colour pigments and the colour names and figure out where they lean on the spectrum without buying them first so I hope that that is helpful for you and again I'll leave it linked down below for everyone else I will leave a short list of warm and cool yellow red and blue and you can pick from that and I hope that that was um, helpful because again it's a really good question and it's definitely one that I get asked quite often and I think I'll probably end up making another video about it because so much can be said about it
And I guess if I had to pick like one one set at the moment, it would be the Roman Schmoll Urban Sketching Kit. Or if I wanted tubes, it would be like the Daniel Smith, I think it's called like Essential Set, something like that to start off with. Or the Daniel Smith Jane Blundell set. That's not like a beginner set, but I think it has a really nice range of different colours and really interesting, vibrant colours that I personally am drawn to. Then Kathy Hackney asks, favorite minimal travel supplies, favorite sketchbook under $20 and have I tried acrylic gouache? Excellent questions. Um, so I have tried acrylic gouache, although not as much as I would like. I still don't feel like I know it, feel like I go through phases where I want to try different art supplies and I haven't spent long enough in the acrylic art phase. With regards to my favorite sketchbook for under $20, again, I'm in the UK. So the my favorite cellulose sketchbook at the moment is the Sea White of Brighton sketchbook. In the past, I was using the Moleskine watercolor album. And the thing is, I do like the finish of that sketchbook and when I get that sketchbook and it is fine it is one of my favorites however there have been a number of times where I have bought that sketchbook and the paper in that sketchbook has been suboptimal I don't know if it's where it was produced or how it was stored in the shop or whatnot but because of all that inconsistency I've stopped buying it because they are not cheap so yes I like the C. White of Brighton I also like the Heine Müller uh, watercolor sketchbooks and I'm saying cellulose sketchbooks because I can't think of a sketchbook that is a hundred percent cotton and under 26 under 20 dollars or 20 pounds apart from maybe the A6 etcher sketchbook and yeah like I, <laughs> I love the paper I have no issue with it it's just that I prefer working in a5 size so if I had to oh yeah the alternative to that would actually be getting a watercolor block that's like a Meden or Bao Hong 100% cotton watercolor block so I think that would actually be top choice followed by the C White of Brighton sketchbook followed by the Heine Müller sketchbook that would be my order <laughs> but if we were to remove the price point, then I would say that my favourite sketchbook is the Etcher Signature Series Cold Press Sketchbook. I just love the size. I love the Fabriano paper inside. I love the finish of it. It's just a wonderful sketchbook. It does have a really good quality 300 GSM, so thick watercolour paper. So to me, it does almost feel like a sketchbook for finished pieces. And I'm not saying that that is what it should be. It's just how I feel about it and how I treat it. So for my sketchbook that I treat a little bit more like my sketchbook, when I can test out different techniques, but also create really good quality pieces and have the same effect that I would expect is the everyday watercolour sketchbook. Again, by Etcher, 100% cotton. B5 and Portrait and I will leave links down below in the description if you do get them from Etcher then I have a 10% discount code which is Sketches10 again all down below and in addition to that I would say my own sketchbooks I have been making sketchbooks and there'll be more about that coming soon as well as in the description but essentially I love sketchbooks I love creating art and I just thought it was a good thing to create my own sketchbooks that meet my needs and hopefully will meet the needs of others as well so I will leave that link down below in terms of sketchbooks that are I guess more mess around sketchbooks that have imperfections then my caddy fat book which is the sketchbook that I'm creating art in now would be my go-to it's not something that I would use for finished pieces although I love the results that I'm creating here but it is something that I would just use to do swatches or to mess around or to like just play around in my sketchbook completely carefree because of its low price point the like crazy amount of pages that are inside and the fact that it is also 100% cotton although it's cotton rag paper so it's different to other 100% cotton watercolor papers and I tend to find the others superior to this I just like to use this as a fun sketchbook the next question is about my favorite minimal urban sketching setup and I think this is such a good question it makes me laugh because I am not minimal uh, I have created many videos highlighting the different supplies that I take for each trip the color palettes the tips the tricks and so much more and I will leave them linked for you if I had to go as minimal as possible then, then the supplies that I would take so let me say like five five supplies oh I don't know 
I mean, I don't know. I can't put a number on it, but if I had to be as minimal as possible, it would be my Etcher Everyday Sketchbook, my 2023 Roman Schmoll watercolour palette, and I'll link that video for you. It would be my travel brush, which would be the one I've been using for years. Um, that is by Top Maya. That being said, it's just like a generic brand. And the reason that I would probably pick that over the Fumui is just because it is stiffer and more versatile. So I would be able to use it with gouache as well as with watercolor. My next supply would be New Color Twos. I think that would, and then my um, Pentel Graph Gear pencil and I think that that's probably as minimal as I could get but if you were to ask me tomorrow then it would probably also include gouache so that would be my tiny set which I would carry in my etch -a slate mini <laughs> I feel like the list is getting long and then I would have a water cup so probably not minimal but if I had to like cut it down as low as possible then it would be my etch -a everyday sketchbook my 2023 Roman Schmoll watercolor palette and a travel brush but as I say it does change so I definitely just recommend that you watch the videos that I have created where I highlight the different supplies that I have taken with me then speaking of brushes I got asked you keep separate sets of brushes for gouache and watercolor and the answer is yes and um, essentially I don't use my good quality watercolor brushes for gouache because I feel like that would be too rough on them however I am happy to use a gouache brush for example on my watercolors so my preference would be to use good quality watercolor brushes for my watercolors and use mixed media brushes that are a bit stiffer for my gouache however if I only have mixed media brushes to hand for example like the previous question I am urban sketching then I am happy to use that brush for gouache but I wouldn't use my watercolor brush for gouache I hope that makes sense but yes, <laughs> is the is the short answer. Thank you for asking, Snow Pony. And then Miss Ebony, one of the realist MVPs who's been here for so long, asks, do you ever get overwhelmed by all your art supply? And the answer is yes and no. Well, I guess it's yes, because the question is, do you ever? Yes, there have been times where I feel like I have so many art supplies. I don't know where to start or I feel like I want to create with everything, but I feel like I don't have time to create with them. Um, or just sometimes I just feel like I I'm not yet good enough to use art supplies or I feel bad that I haven't used certain things so yes I do sometimes feel overwhelmed but I think way more often than not so like 99% of the time I just feel grateful and excited about the supplies I feel happy to have them excited about what I can create with them excited to learn more about them to use them so more times than not it is a positive feeling however if you are listening to this or watching this and feel like sometimes you do feel overwhelmed then you know that you are certainly certainly not alone and I think it happens to um, more people than we think and it's just a question to not think about all the art supplies but to think about what you want to use now and take it a step at a time and think about the good and the positive things that you get from your art supplies and if it comes to the point where actually you feel like you have more than you want or more than you need or you've outgrown your art supplies then think about sharing some of the joy that they brought by um, gifting them or selling them or donating them and um, turn that feeling of overwhelm into a positive feeling so yeah I hope that this has helped if you are still watching then you are a real MVP and I really 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 appreciate you I thought that I would be able to answer all the questions <laughs> in this video and we are in fact halfway through so there are still more questions about like my art practice my personal life YouTube and so much more so you've guessed it there will be a part two maybe even a part three we shall see but if you are still watching you are a real MVP let me know that you are still watching by either telling me your favorite watercolor brand if you're a watercolor artist or your favorite brand in general if you use a different medium and if you are so inclined to ask me another question for the future video then feel free to leave that down below in the comments thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye